Hello everybody and welcome to this video where I'm about to do something that I think might be a little hard for me to do. For those of you who've known me for at least the last year, you've heard me talk about this big poetry collection of unreleased poems that I'm putting out soon called Seasons of the Muse. I haven't like put it together yet. And one of the reasons is, is because whenever I was coming across poems about my ex, I would start crying and shit. I think I'm ready now to do this, but one of the things that a really good friend of mine just said to me was, you need to do this before you go. You need to put this behind you before you leave. And I hadn't even thought of it like that. So maybe that's kind of the thing that keeps fucking me up mentally. I don't know, I guess right now I'm going to do a live stream for my members of me putting as much of this together as I can. I was about to do some like cover design for some new chat books, but this seems like it's a little pressing. So here we go. And if you're one of my members, you're gonna be getting um, a copy of this to beta read warp speed, because I don't know if I'm actually gonna read it right now, but um, I am definitely gonna be putting it together right now so let's see how this goes fingers crossed right and you know what i'll say this right now too to my ex you ever come across this which you may or you may not it's kind of weird because like i really think the last thing you want to do is hear my voice or see my face but at the same time you kind of can't help if someone's talking about you to go listen so you might actually end up hearing this. So what I will say is, like, no matter how messed up things got with you and me, I appreciate the time we had together, and I thank you for coming into my life. And I honestly, honestly wish you all of the best, and I just want you to be happy, okay? So good luck to you and your life and everything you do. See you later. Thanks for the poems. Hey everybody, it is 5.30 in the morning and I have not been able to sleep. I would like to blame it on um, dental work, but I don't think I'm that lucky. As you know, um, earlier in this video I told you that I did the whole uh, putting together the book of um, poems about my ex. It took about five hours um, after a fucking four hour live stream of me doing it. For members, if you would like to join, you could watch that. Going through all those poems, like for most of those poems, this is the first time I've even looked at them since I wrote them. And I didn't realize how shitty my ex was to me like the last year we were together and I'm not saying she was like it all the time but I think I like completely did the rose tinted glasses thing and all of the times where like she like took my car and was out all night and um, would like come home in a rage about something that I had no control over or nothing to do with and just, she needed somebody to fucking like chew out and like yell at kind of deal. Like I have like really forgotten all of that shit and have like, even though I knew like there were a lot of bad times with us, like I didn't even put that shit together. And then all the shit like dudes who like, I felt like she was like cheating on me with and stuff like that, or at least like toying with the idea and then like a fucking idiot, like in after going through all these poems, I fucking texted her. And not, not, not that she's gonna fucking respond to me because like in her head, like, I don't know how to explain it. Like she's really good. I mean, I haven't talked to her in over a year. So I'm sitting here telling you what she's really good at. I don't fucking know. All I know is that she's a survivor. And if I could give her any credit for being anything, like, that's what I will give her. Like, no matter what, she will always be okay. And she will be the last person standing. 
and that's fucking commendable because like I don't think I could be that person as much as I think I'm a bad motherfucker you know like I don't think I could do that but she can she could totally do that but like even early on in some of those poems like I say stuff like I know how this is gonna end but I need you if we're gonna do this I need you to be an adult I need you to like still talk to me because however this goes however long this goes I want you in my life you know and um like she promised me those things and she has never followed through with that shit but like I'm sure she thinks I broke tons of promises to her too like she never wanted me to throw her out and I didn't throw her out but I did say hey if you break up with me you have to leave you can't just like live here after we break up um that was always like a big bone of contention between us and then just like the whole thing like how I was like really cool with her and wanted everything to be really amicable and like I was gonna help her out as much as I could I helped her move I drove her to her new place but like I told her I'm like hey if you need to tell your friends a bunch of like badass shit about me that makes me look really bad and puts you in a more like kind of victim light just so your friends will help you because like she always talked about how like her friends were like kind of fair weathered friends like they weren't going to like her friends here in California because that was another thing and I forgot all about this until I was reading the poems tonight she fucking hates California or did when we were together and she's like my friend's back home like they're fucking awesome they're with me through thick and thin my friends here are fucking assholes and they're only there with me when it's convenient for them and all this other shit so we like concocted this whole plot of how she can like make me look bad to make sure her friends would be there for her when we split and like one of her friends like like hooked her up with a car and like um i think one of her like teachers at school like hooked her up with a place to stay like regardless i mean i don't know if she was like having sex with the dude or sleeping with the guy or whatever i don't know um there were a, a couple instances where things like looked fishy and shit um but anyway, so, like, we came up with all this shit, and then, like, as soon as she was gone, it was like she believed all the shit, and I didn't understand, and then she came back one time, and then the whole time, she was like, I'm just so pissed that, like, I had to be the one to come to you, and I'm like, well, like, you don't have to come to me, I can come to you if you want, but, like, you don't want me near your place, because you said, like, you don't want my energy in your new place. So, like, I don't know what the fuck you want from me, you know? I don't know. It was so weird. Because, like, that last time I saw her... This is like a therapy session. I'm really sorry. Like, if this is too much information. But the last time I saw her, she was sweet to me. Which was weird. Because, like, we had been fighting so much. And we had talked about... Like, basically, she wanted to come here and yell at me for a while. So I let her yell at me for a while because I thought that's what she wanted. And then after she, like, I'm like, look, if you want to yell and just fucking, like, rant and tell me how you feel for the next however long, you go ahead and do it and I won't fucking say anything. And then she started, and then I, I remember I, like, said one thing. And she's like, you said you weren't going to say anything. And I'm like, you're right. Like, go ahead. Like, I'm sorry. I fucked up. And she just, like, fucking chewed me out for, like, the longest time. And then she's like, so I came here for sex. Are we going to fuck or what? And, like, I'm like, oh. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. And she made it really clear. Like, she wasn't going to kiss me. There wasn't going to be anything, like, romantic. It was just, like straight dirty sex right and then we did the straight dirty sex and then she kissed me and 
everything was cool. I'm like, oh, I wasn't expecting that. And she's like, yeah, I wasn't either. But, like, here we are. And it was nice. And then I'm like, well, can I, like, walk you out? Because, like, she's like, I don't mean to fucking dip. She's like, but I don't want to be here. I'm like, all right, that's cool. So, like, I walked her outside, and it was really nice. And, like, she showed me her new car that she got from her friend. And, um, like, I said something, and she's like, I don't ever want to get in your fucking car again. And I'm like, that's really fucking rude, because, like, you didn't have a car, and you drove my car for, like, two fucking years. And that car got you everywhere you needed to go. And you never had to fucking pay for any of the fucking, like, registration. You never had to pay for the fucking insurance. You never had to pay for the parking. You never had to fucking pay for fucking anything. And you're acting like I put you out by you driving my car. And so I was like, that, that was kind of weird. And then, like, I said something about me getting in her car. And she's like, yeah, you're not allowed in my car. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, lots of rules. You know, I'm not allowed in your car, but I'm allowed in your vagina. That's fucking weird. <sighs> I don't know. But, like, I just remember things. Like, she said that last night. She's like, I hate that I hate talking to my friends. They're fucking idiots. And, like, when I talk to you... Like, I feel like I could have, like, deep talks and, like, actually talk about shit. But when I talk to my friends, it's, like, so, like, surface-level base bullshit. Which is weird, because they're all medical students. You would think they would have more to fucking say, but... Um, no, they're, they're pretty fucking bland motherfuckers, I will say that. Um, whatever. It, that's not important. It's just thing and then she did the whole thing where like I wasn't allowed to talk to any of her friends after we broke up and like she told all of her friends to like like unfollow me on social media so like like I, I think it was honestly just a thing to where like I wouldn't like out her for some of the shit that she said or expose some of her shit and like I totally fucking get it like they're her friends whatever <clears throat> um, I, like, I didn't think I was really that close with any of her friends, but there were some of her friends that, like, I don't know, like, I had, like, pretty deep talks with, and I thought, like, I mean, I knew that they would always be more her friends than mine, but, um, just the straight cut was fucking weird for me. But, like, again, dude, like, she's a survivor. She did what she had to do, and I get it. But, um, going through those poems, man, that was a lot. That was a fucking lot. And there was so much shit that I went through reading those poems. Like, it was like a roller coaster of emotions all at once. Because, again, like, most of those poems I have not read since I wrote them. Because I knew I couldn't handle it, you know? And, um... I mean, it's toxic as fuck because, like, I never loved anybody like I loved her. Like, straight up. Um... I probably still... I think I still, like, love her. Like, I mean, of course I love her, but, like... There's a part of me that's like, are you still in love with her? Like, you haven't even, like, heard her voice in over a year. Are you still in love with her? Like, does that even make sense? Does that compute? And, um, I don't know. Like, I thought for sure I would stop thinking about her. I think about her every fucking day. Every day. Every day I think about, like, her eyes, her smile, her laugh. Like. And every day I think about things that, like, I should have done better. Like, regardless of how she treated me and the whole thing, I 
was not the, the partner that she needed at that time. Like, I should have done more. And, like, I could totally see that now. And, like, fucking in retrospect, everybody's the best boyfriend in the world, you know? But, like, I should have took her more places. I should have wanted to do more things. But it was, like, I don't know. When you have everything, you feel like you don't need anything else. And, like, I had her and I had my art. And, like, it's, like, what the fuck else do I need? Like, I have her, my art, I have my alcohol, I got my cigarettes. Like, I, I could stay in this house forever and be fine. Like, being in her presence was enough sunlight. Like, I didn't need to go outside, you know? But, like, I totally should have done stuff. And, like, since me and her split and I started, like, going farther out, like, on walks and shit... I've seen so many places that I'm like, oh man, she would have loved it if I would have took her here. She would have fucking loved this place. And it just sucks because my whole point in being, when I first started like walking farther, I just needed to get out of this neighborhood because this neighborhood was our neighborhood. And every fucking thing I looked at reminded me of her. So I started walking further out and further out and further out. And instead of it being like, oh, wow, look at this new place I'm at. It turned into, God damn it. She would have loved this place. And if I would have brought her here, like I would have memories of her smile in this fucking place. It's like, dude, it's been forever. Get over it. It's so fucking dumb. And like, dude, like she's with this dude who I knew she was gonna end up with anyway, which is fucking hysterical. But like, that's another thing about her, like being a survivor, her backup plans, her plan Bs were always in check. She probably had plan B and plan C, like ready to go, like just in case. So it's so funny because when um, like, because, like, I haven't checked her social media since, I think, the beginning of last October was the last time I looked. <clears throat> and, um, it was at, I think the last post she did that I saw was of her either at the Haunted Hayride or Halloween Horror Nights. I can't remember which one. It was probably the Haunted Hayride. Because I can't imagine her being okay going to Halloween Horror Nights with her fear of Chucky. I can't see that happening. Anyway. Um, but she, that dude was there. I think it's the same guy. I don't know. Unless she just has, like, this knack for, like, super generic looking, at, like, Scandinavian looking fucking dudes. But I saw the dude in the video and like they weren't like in her post and they weren't like together together, but it was just like, I knew I'm like, okay, so, oh man, she's totally like, this is probably like a date. This is, this is awkward. Like they're like trying to look like they're having a good time, but it's probably a date. Um, or it, it was like one of those things where they've already been sleeping together, but the friends don't know it yet. Cause that's another thing that she does like she doesn't like to like show her cards if she doesn't have to and i don't fucking blame her for that either fuck i wouldn't do it so it was just like when i saw that i'm like okay look i don't need to be following her anymore i don't need to be looking at her shit anymore um i think honestly i just needed to know that she was gonna be looked after and I know that sounds fucking stupid. I just needed to know she was going to be okay. Because honestly, like, that's kind of the most important thing for her, is stability. To an extent. Because, like, I don't know, she left stability to be with me. But stability is important, and it's something that has been, like, pushed on her from her family which again I get 
and if this guy is who I think he is, and I'm just gonna hope that's him. He's like a fucking trust fund dude. So, like his parents are rich, he's sitting on a shit ton of money that he'll eventually get. He's gonna be a doctor like all these other fucking doctor motherfuckers. So, like, he is what she kind of has always wanted. So with that said, I really hope that's good. And then, like, because of other people that I do follow, I have seen little bits of her on accident. Um, and the thing that sucks about that is that she does the thing where... She's, like, smiling... And then she, I think, thinks that the camera's not on her anymore. And then the smile just drops. But it's like, I've been on the other end of that. And I know how what that's like. So I don't know if like that dude was in the doghouse or if she was just having a bad day or maybe she was having a migraine. Kind of bums me out. Like I just, I, I want her to be happy and I want her to be loved and taken care of. Because she's so easy to love, especially when she is, like, happy. And I know that sounds fuck. Of course everyone's easy to love when they're happy. I'll say this. When she lets her guard down, she is the most beautiful fucking being on the planet. But she doesn't let her guard down very often. And I don't blame her, because again, she's a survivor. But, like, when I think of her... And I remember her. I remember her being vulnerable with me. And her letting her guard down. And her being that beautiful, beautiful fucking person. And not to say she's not beautiful when she's, like, being a hard ass. It's just, it's different. You know? And I've been around a lot of hard ass women. So, like, that's nothing new to me. But, um, her vulnerability, her, just how big her eyes get when she trusts you enough to see that side of her. It was just a gift. And when she said she never wanted to read my poems again because my poems are lies, that broke my heart more than anything. But I remember one of the big fights we got into was me saying that my art would always come first because if I didn't have my art, like, I would go crazy. And the only thing I know for sure that the last like two years have taught me is that not having art drives me crazy but not having her that was too much I would rather have her than art I think the reason why a lot of people are artists is because they don't have the thing that makes the sun shine, you know? And I had that, and I gave it up for art. I don't know if giving it up is the right word. It's just been, it's been over a year. And I still think about her every fucking day. And like, she's been with dudes. That's great. I hope she's happy. I've been with chicks. And I still think about her every day. I compare her to every person I've been with.
I see her everywhere. That's one of the reasons why I want to get out of this apartment so bad. Like, every place I stand in this apartment, I could turn and see her in five or six different places. Because the whole time we were together, it was like I knew it wasn't going to last. And I feel like that was like such a self-fulfilling prophecy and I probably dug my own grave by doing that. Because there are a couple things that I remember that were probably nails in the coffin for me with her. But, um... It was just like, I knew that this was probably going to be temporary. So every moment I tried to like, take like snapshots in my head because I knew it wasn't going to be like this forever. But like one of the things that I fucked up was like, she asked me, like we were in bed one night laying there and she asked me where I saw myself in five years and I described what her life was going to be like in five years and how successful she was going to be and how happy she looked and all this other shit and she's like well where were you like in that thought and I'm like I don't know I guess I'm looking at you during all that and she's like well are you there with me like, do you see yourself there with me? I'm like, well, I see you. So, I mean, I guess I have to be there, right? And I, like, I should have just been like, yes, I see myself with you. Like, just saying that one little fucking line maybe could have changed everything, you know? But then at the end of the day, like, would that change even have been worth it? Like, because, like, I mean, I could sit here and tell you how much I love her. Like, until I'm blue in the fucking face. But if she was still going to be how she ended up being, like, it wouldn't fucking matter. You know what I'm saying? And then her just, like, completely, like, cutting me off. Like, um, no closure, no nothing. Um, and she did that with her ex before me, too. And that fucked him up really bad. And I have a feeling that she did that with the two guys before him. Because, like, that, that's the other thing. Like, she, she's never been alone. She, like, goes right into the next relationship. Like, every relationship she's been in. Like, she had the other relationship set up, ready to go by the time she was done. And, again, that goes to her, like, survival thing. But, um, and it's like, I knew that going in. I knew that was what was going to happen. Like, and I'm pretty sure that's probably why I wasn't allowed in her new place, you know? It, it doesn't matter. Like, that's not even what I'm trying to get at here. What I'm trying to get at here is that, like, I texted her tonight after putting those poems together, after reading all those poems, after reading the poems of her being horrible to me and breaking my fucking heart, like, daily. And I still fucking reached out to her, telling her, like, hey, I know I probably shouldn't be texting you, but I'm just thinking about you. Unbelievable, dude. So, I don't know. Um, I don't think you're, you ever will, but Christine, if you ever watch this, I fucking love you still. Um, I would love to hear how you're doing. I just want to know that you're okay. Whether or not you ever want to, like, have anything to do with me again. I just want to know you're okay. And I'm sure you are. So, but be, uh, um, I miss you. I think about you every day. I understand that you have moved on, um, I understand that I have been trying to move on. It's probably easy or easier. And I'm sure putting this book out will finally be closure since I didn't get it from you. I wish I would have got it from you. I fucking miss you so much. I think about you every fucking day. I hate that we just 
stopped. It's like you died. It's awful. You were my everything, every day, and then you just fucking weren't there anymore. And we made so many promises to each other that like no matter what happened, like we were gonna be in each other's lives. That um, I would still be there for you, you would still be there for me. But like obviously that wasn't gonna be a thing. It is what it is. I don't blame you, I'm probably pretty difficult. Um, I'm very emotional and it would probably be really hard to be like normal with somebody who is emotional as I am. And especially when you're trying to not be like romantically involved. So I get that. I just hope that whoever you're with, whether it's this dude or the next dude or whatever, I hope that you get to be that vulnerable person. And like, if you want any relationship to work with whoever you're with in the future, you have to break those walls down and you gotta keep them down. You can't keep putting them up when you get scared. You can't. You're, you're never gonna be happy if you keep doing that. I know it's scary. I know it's scary to let people in like that and trust them that much. But you're never going to be happy if you don't do that. So, I mean, I know it's not going to be me. But, like, whether it's the guy you're with now or the next guy or whatever. Just try. Please. You are so beautiful inside. I mean, you're beautiful outside. But inside you're so gorgeous. But, like, you hide that so much. I don't know, baby. Uh, this is as much closure as I'm probably going to get. So, I apologize if you come across this later in life. But after sending many texts to you and you ignoring all of them um i don't know what else to do <sighs> i love you have a good life and just take care of yourself please